Now, we're going to start this morning with a technology that's moving very, very fast, and that's wireless communications. You know, we've seen the complexity of wireless devices grow dramatically over the last 15 years or so. Back in the year 2000, it was pretty common for a GSM phone to support maybe two frequency bands. Today, the smartphone in your pocket supports at least 20 RF bands between 2G, 3G, and 4G, not to mention the other wireless standards like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and near-field communication. And with 5G right on the horizon, we know we're going to have a bunch more capability, but also complexity and test requirements coming into mobile uh, phones and other wireless devices. And 5G, it's no longer just a dream. As I mentioned, its timeline is accelerating. And that acceleration forces innovation. And you and NI's platform have been at the center of that innovation over the past few years. Back in the year 2010, NI started a wireless lead user program to partner with researchers in academia and industry to help invent what would become 5G. Our lead user team, along with researchers at Nokia, Samsung, University of Bristol, and others, have worked on the, some of the most challenging aspects of 5G, like millimeter wave and massive MIMO. These research have, researchers have been able to build on our platform to iterate rapidly so that they can uh, increase their time, or decrease rather, their time to market. And because we've taken this platform approach, NI is in a unique position to be able to scale this capability for 5G test requirements. As an example, as 5G moves from research to commercialization, a really important measurement technology is what's called channel sounding especially since 5G is looking at some very high frequency bands around 28 and 39 gigahertz, understanding those wireless channels is a critical aspect to the implementation of 5G networks. So to tell us more about how they're using NI's platform for channel sounding, please join me in welcoming from AT&T Labs, Dr. Arun Ghosh, and from NI, Dr. Tanem Tahir. Hey, guys. All right. Welcome, thank you for joining us, Arun. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that you probably know more about channel sounding than a, probably anyone in the room, so why don't you enlighten us and tell us what channel sounding is? Sure. Uh, so in order to understand, Eric, uh, what channel sounding is, you know, we have to take a step back and understand what the channel does to the signal. So as your signal travels from the transmitter to the receiver, there are essentially two very critical things that happen to it. The first is an uh, attenuation, which happens due to things like distance-dependent losses. It happens due to the electromagnetic wave going through any material like wall or foliage or glass. And the second thing that happens is what we call as a distortion, which happens due to things like delay spread, angular spread, and Doppler spread of the channel. So what we do with channel sounding is to go to a field, take measurements, and develop these stochastic models that we can later then plug into things like system simulators, test equipments, and lab uh, environments to understand the behavior of the system. Yeah, and, and why is channel sounding so important now you know, for 5G? Right, and as you mentioned, you know, with 5G, we are moving a lot towards millimeter wave, and in millimeter wave, the volume of work for channel sounding and channel models is actually fairly sparse. And moreover, at AT&T, we felt that most of the channel models that exist are very, very location specific. And uh, most of them actually don't fit the, the kind of scenarios that we would expect to deploy. So for example, we might deploy in a suburban neighborhood mm. to provide fixed wireless. Uh, we might uh, deploy this in a multi-hop network using uh, self-backhauling systems. Or we might deploy this in a vehicular environment for V2X kind of applications. And none of those channel models actually exist. Uh, so, and that's why it, today as we stand and we are looking at deploying 5G networks, understanding the channel model and understanding the impairment, I think is a critical step to deploy the network in an efficient manner. Very cool. Okay, so how are you using NI's platform to help? Yeah, so what we decided to do, since there are no models, we actually decided to build our own channel sounder using NI's uh, LabVIEW and PXI platform. And by building our own sounder, we can go and make measurements in places where we deploy, and then fine tune the network and the system to the use case. Very cool, and it's pretty cool looking, I must say. Um, but what makes this one unique to other channel sounders? Yes, uh, you know, besides its you know, cool and unique looks, there are two things that I think this channel sounder is, uh, is very unique. 
Uh, the first is the speed with which we are able to collect the record and record the data and display the sounder, as you will see in a, in a, little, in a little bit, display the model real time. So all the other sounders that we know essentially do this in post-processing, but with this sounder, we can actually show you the channel model and the data that we collect post-process real time. Very cool. And the second thing is if you really look at that head, you know, which goes to its cool looks, uh, essentially allows you to measure this channel in a 360 degree in azimuth and about 120 degree in, in elevation. So you can actually collect a full model uh, within 150 milliseconds. Okay, and as most of you have experienced, this is an ideal environment in this keynote hall to test the wireless channel. So, uh, Tanem, why don't you uh, show us a demo? And I'm going to move my head out of the way of that <laughs> sure, millimeter wave beam. On the other side of the stage, that's the transmitter. It's sending out a sounding signal that is bouncing off all of the walls and traveling to the environment and being received by the 64 antennas of the receiver here. Literally, in the blink of, of an eye, the system switches the transmit antenna seven times and the receiver antenna seven times 16, or 112 times to me measure the channel environment in real time. On, um, that explains why the graphs are changing really fast as the software is plotting the hundreds of measurements on screen. That's why it's really changing fast. Um, on the bottom right of the screen, we have the angle of arrival charts. These are showing the direction of arrival of all the reflections and of all the signals. And on the top left, I have the waterfall chart, which is showing the change in the environment over time. Um, notice the bright lines are for the sectors that are pointing towards the transmitter, and the darker ones are re referring to the ones behind. Um, so to further illustrate the real-time nature of the system, I'm going to switch to a single path, a direct path. And as our very own Sarah Yost moves a blocker along antenna 6 of the transmitter, you will see the signal strength uh, changing and the path loss increasing. Note the darker areas of the waterfall chart are caused because of increased absorption and higher path loss because of the blocker. We can also see the channel impulse response, which is the bottom left uh, figure, and the uh, bandwidth over a full one gigahertz uh, channel over here on the frequency response. At the same time, we are plotting and measuring channel parameters, for example, the path loss, the flight time in nanoseconds, as an example, if you read the distance is showing 24.2 meters, that is in fact the exact distance between the TX to RX here on stage today. And of course, Lab VFPGA is able to process all these measurements in real time, even as you drive this thing along. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, speaking of that, um, earlier, Rune, you mentioned vehicular scenarios, high Doppler scenarios. How does the sounder help, help so, those measurements? As, as Tani mentioned, you know, this is a self-contained mobile unit, and you can drive this at about eight miles an hour. And I know eight miles an hour doesn't really seem all that exciting, but if it, when it comes to instrumentation, that is actually light speed. And we can even put this equipment in a truck or in a car and do vehicle to vehicle measurements at higher speeds. I wanted to drive it around the stage, but they, they wouldn't let me. Um, anyway, Arun, that is pretty awesome. Uh, we're very proud to be working with you and your team at ATT. Thank you, keep thank it up. Thank you very much. Tenem, thank you.